when I was going to publish my third book, people used to ask me on the streets, what's the name of a new book? And I would say 80% of your overweight is in your mind. And I would get the same reaction over and over and over again. People used to tell me, it is true. I totally agree with you. It is the power of the mind. And don't get me wrong, I was, I was just not talking to people with overweighted problems or uh, obese. I was talking to anyone, but even people that didn't have any problem with weight would say the same. It is the mind. Some even would say that until they changed their mind, they were able to lose weight and keep it down. But good news is, by the end of this talk, you will have three tools so you can use your mind to lose weight. Although, I am pretty sure that you have already been using the power of your mind to change your weight. But the problem is maybe the opposite direction, maybe to gain weight. Let's see. Try to remember last Christmas, last December. Raise your hand if you believed you were going to gain weight during December. Raise your hand. All right. Almost everyone. Now, raise your hand if you actually gained weight in December. Congratulations. You use the power of your mind to change your weight. Yeah, the opposite direction, as I told you. But you used it. And you know something? Um, when you step on the scale in January and you say, I knew it. Of course you knew it. It wasn't the budget. You already knew that you were going to find more parties, uh, more food on the table, uh, more engagements with people that you didn't even know last year. But, and you said, well, it's a couple of pounds, a couple of kilos. It's OK. But then it comes the emotions that we experience when we have overweight. We feel guilty because, well, we didn't do any exercise in December. We feel guilty because, well, we found a lot of parties and we couldn't say no. We feel shame because we see in the mirror and we don't like what we see. We feel anxiety because now we need to eat and I can't eat. And all those emotions, they have something in common. And you know something? Some of you even posted a picture of the December challenge. <laughs> I, I won't say there were some good ones. But even those created those emotions. And those emotions have something in common. They trigger the stress response in our body. What is that? Well, it's the response of our body when we perceive a danger. It was quite useful when it was a tiger or a snake thousands of years ago. Not that useful if it's a slice of pizza or a cake that we're afraid of. But those emotions, when we have the stress response, we send blood to our extremities because we need to fight or flight. And other organs, other systems do not get as much blood. One of them, the most important for this talk, is digestive system. We don't get enough blood in the digestive system. So it works pretty slowly. It's taking a nap. And you're saying, come on, I'm eating a lot. I need you to wake up. Hey, 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 wait. Just go on, survive. And if you survive, then come back. But that never happens. We keep focusing on the same emotions over and over again. Isn't that right? You know, when the opposite happens, when we are able to change that and focus our attention on the positive emotions or the emotions that makes us feel good, it happens the opposite, totally the opposite. Our body starts to work, pro work properly, and we digest, the metabolisms go fast, but we tend to put our attention on the stressful emotions. And we rely on the past. We say, well, I remember that I bounced back, and I feel bad. Yeah, I remember I, I did a lot of diets that never worked, and we feel bad. So I'm going to test your attention and your memory. I'm going to show you a picture, and that picture your job is count all the orange balloons that you can see in the picture. I'm just going to give you three seconds, all right? 
Go. All right, now, close your eyes. Now, try to remember how many white balloons were there in the picture. What happened? You didn't see the white balloons because you were putting your attention on the orange balloons. By the way, who was able to see a flying cow in the picture? Some of you, the other ones, you didn't see a flying cow? A flying cow, come on, I mean, it's not like, uh, can you see it? <laughs> it is because we're putting our attention on the things that makes us feel the stress response. So, here's a tool, number one. Where you put your attention, you put your, your energy. Put your attention on the things that make you feel good. Gratitude. When we put our attention on gratitude, more of that shows up. Laughter. Laugh more, please, laugh more. You will lose weight if you would laugh more. Put your attention on the things that nourish you. Peace, happiness. And when that happens, well, you have the first tool to change your mind. Tool number two. Use the right language. And you can say, well, I always use it. Well, not sure you do. For example, you go to uh, January and you say, well, what I'm going to do this year is, well, I am not going to eat pizza because I can't stand pizza in front of me. I have to eat it. So this time, I won't eat pizza. You even write it down. I am not going to eat pizza. I am not going to eat pizza. You heard about the law of attraction, so you write it out 10 times. You post it everywhere in your house. I am not going to eat pizza. Then you go to your friend's house, you're going to watch football, and of course, they order pizza. And there you are, feeling strong, saying, I am not going to eat pizza. I am not going to eat pizza. Ten minutes later, you're eating pizza. One slice, don't think so. Half of the pizza you're eating. Why? Because your brain skips the command not, or do not, or want, or just no. Why? Because your brain makes sense of this word with thoughts that are images and not, it's an abstract concept. So it goes through the images and let's put it to the test, all right? Just follow my command. Ready? Do not, I repeat, do not think about cheese pizza with melting cheese on top and that smell of hot pizza. What happened? I told you not to think about it twice. <laughs> and you were thinking about it. You can't help it. Your brain just skips the command. Up. And there we are saying, I am not going to do that. I am not going to gain weight. I am not going to eat that. So change the language. Use the right language. You can say, this year, I'm going to stay away from pizza. That your brain can understand. And you can even say, if I see pizza, I will eat just one slice. Not only that, I am going to enjoy that pizza as a kid. Because when we enjoy the food that we eat, without any of the negative emotions, we can digest. Our immune system works better. Our metabolism go fast. So use the right language. So here we are with the second tool, which is Try to make the sentences in positive. I know it, it is not that easy, but if you can do it, it works perfectly. And you can use that with your kids too. Well, that's another talk, but you can use it. Now, you're doing everything uh, great, but here it comes, the worst enemy of any diet. Cravings. Why cravings? Because cravings are not just some food that you want to eat, you can't not eat it when you see it. Why is that? Well, because there's this bond between an emotion and food. And when this bond goes on time and gets strong, 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 it's not easy to uh, dissolve this bond just by thought alone. We need something more powerful. And I'm going to show you a really powerful simply an effective tool to break this bond between an emotion and the food. And it's called
tapping. No, it's not dancing like a tapping. We call it tapping because we tap on some endpoints of meridians in our body. I'm going to show them to you. And what this does is breaks this bond. OK? Are you ready to do some tapping? All right. Now, think about your craving. Anything that is pizza, cho chocolate cake, uh, a bag of chips with lemon and hot sauce. I can see that you, you want to go out and see if there's a break with, with that food. OK, now, see how you see, how you feel. Feel your body. Make sense of your body. And put a number from 0 to 10 of what you're feeling, where 0 is nothing, and, and 10 is, excuse me, I'm going to buy a bag of chips. OK? Just keep it for yourself. Now, I'm going to show you the tapping points. Just follow me, and when I'm uh, doing the tapping sequence, just follow me. I want you to touch it with me now, all right? Do it. Here's the karate chop. Here, top of your head. Eye brown, where it starts, two fingers, side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose. I know I'm going fast, but we have not many minutes, OK? Under the mouth. Now, here, we have two bones here. You go down a couple of inches here, a couple of inches that. Forget what I said, just do this. OK? And under the arm. Now, repeat after me. I know I'm going to say some things that you might say, well, I'm not feeling anxiety. I'm feeling stress. Don't worry. Your brain knows what it's working on. Let's start. Even though, repeat with me. I am feeling anxiety about this craving. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I feel stress, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I wasn't thinking about it, now I'm thinking about it. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Top of your head. This anxiety, this anxiety, I am feeling in my entire body because of this food. I love this food. I really love it. But I feel anxiety. I would like to eat it without this emotion and have a choice to eat it and enjoy it without this emotion. I choose to feel free. I choose to feel fine. I feel good. I really feel good. Wow, I feel good. I feel peace. I really feel good. I feel good. I feel good. And last one, I feel good. Now, breathe. Now, remember the number you had. For most of you, there's a big chance that it just came down. If you were not able to put it to zero, you can repeat these sequences anytime. You can learn this technique for yourself, and it will help you every time. But now you have a choice. You know that you have a choice about your craving. It's not just a bond. It's a choice that you have. You can use tapping to do that. You can use the right language to that. And you can choose to put your attention on gratitude, on happiness, on laughter, on peace, on the things that make you feel good and that will help you lose weight. But it is a choice. And no one is going to take that choice but you. But if you take that choice, one thing I am sure, really sure about, when you change your mind, you can change your weight. But most important, you will transform your life. Thank you very much.